Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Ruby Rogues podcast. I'm your host today, Valentino Stoll, and we're joined today by a very special guest, Jordan Hollinger. Jordan, do you want to introduce yourself and tell everyone why you're famous? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, it's news to me. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm Jordan Hollinger. I've been, and I've been doing Ruby for maybe 12 years now. I think really think I owe my career to Ruby and Rails. Um, no framework's perfect, but yeah, it's great, and I love working with it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. Uh, <laughs> almost exclusively, you know, Ruby, uh, with the exception of the JavaScript sprinkles, right? <laughs> You do what you have to, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> it's not so bad. We've had the uh, JavaScript Jabber folks on the show before, and you know that there's a definite cohesion uh, that's required uh, in the web world. So, yeah, it, I have. To, I'm a little envious of TypeScript. I have to say. Um, yeah, I, what do you I like about had the types? <laughs> <It's> actually, <laughs> I wish. Yeah, I wish. I know there's there's the whole sorbet and the and the new features in Ruby three, but I wish. I wish we had a little more opt-in type kind of things that there are benefits to that that I, that I do miss. Yeah, for sure. So we, we invited you on today to talk about uh, this awesome gem you made called Occam's Record. Do you want to talk a little bit about what that is first before we dive into it? Sure. Um, let's see. The, I think the tagline I gave it was that it's the missing high-performance API for active record. So that's great. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know if you want to dive into the whole history of it, but that yeah, I'm curious. might help explain where, where and why it came. Yeah. I mean, so anytime I think about, you know, an active record, you know, wrapper or addition, uh, you know, I, I think about basically SQL gem. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> uh, so maybe like start about, uh, you know, What's missing from Active Record that kind of got you here? Sure. So yeah, like I said earlier, it's Rails and Active Record are good enough usually. Um, they're fast enough and flexible enough until they aren't. And I've 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 worked on a number of large and or complex Rails and Active Record code bases, and in those projects, you hit points where maybe you need to write unions or you need to do with queries uh, common table expressions and there there are escape hatches for those kind of things you know find by sql so you can you know handwrite it all and sometimes that works great but sometimes it's not enough uh maybe you need to eager load associations off of that can't do that maybe you need to you know use find each or find in batches so you don't run out of memory Nope, that's not there. Um, and even when you have those things, like so let's say let's say you're looping through all your users, right? And you eager load their orders. On Amazon, I've got, gosh, I'm embarrassed to even guess how many orders I would have. You wouldn't want to load all of them. You'd want to eager load, you know, the last 30 days or maybe sort them a certain way. And there's no great way to do that on active record there are some hacks but they're uh, they're verbose and they're they're not public, they use private apis uh, so it's risky and so yeah th those frustrations have always kind of been there in the back of my mind you find ways around it but they're bad um i had this one project come up it was too complicated to get into but active record was way too slow it was taking hours to run, lots of hours, like overnight. And so we talked about, uh, okay, maybe an external tool or maybe even, yeah, a gem like SQL. Uh, then we realized all the functionality we'd have to duplicate and keep up to date in sync. And you know, forget about the automated unit tests. Uh, but I remembered that Active Record has some really amazing metaprogramming abilities. Like you can call on a model, you can call dot columns, you can get all the names of the columns, all their data types. Also on a model, you can call dot reflections and you can see, oh, here are all my belong to's and has many's and all the models and columns they refer to. All that, all that good stuff is in there. That's really powerful. 
so we we used those reflections and we generated all the SQL we needed. And then we ran it, I guess you'd say raw, like not not through a model, just with the you know, active record connection dot exec query. It's a very low level API. Just returns tuples, but it's really fast. And that took things down from like 15 hours to 15 minutes. Uh, and all because we weren't loading and saving hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of Rails model records. And I'll admit that's an extreme use case. But it, it I got mean, me, it, yeah. It's not that extreme, right? Like it's it's kind of... it. As your application grows, it becomes more and more popular, right? Like your the size uh, ideally, of your tables. Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> but you know, if you if you ever end up on a team with people, like mm -hmm. chances are good you're going to have tables large enough where you're going to have to start optimizing for things, right? And right, your right. associations have grown where you know you you need to start like having to know where to put indexes and how those you know and and even like. Like you're saying, where to eager load things, right? Uh, you know, the the savings there can be significant when you're batching so many. Uh, and I mean, the the first thing that comes, uh, actually, a problem I've I've had repeatedly, <laughs> but recent, uh, is the uh, there there is a an issue with MySQL in uh, you know the find and batches with uh, limits and ordering, mm -hmm. and and. Uh, Notoriously, find and batches uh, will uh, use order and limit to do that batching, right. uh, and it's a problem with MySQL because it'll order first. And so, if you have like a super large table, it will do a full table scan to order, <laughs> and then start limiting. And so, uh, you really have to like roll your own cursor, uh, which yeah. apparently there there seems to be a, in Rails seven a new uh, feature coming where you can uh, have it. Uh, basically, drop the the order and just have it uh, use ranges for the IDs. Okay. Um, so it seems promising, but mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, like you're saying, you know, it it hasn't catered toward these advanced use cases, right? Uh, right. Yeah. It's it, it's usually been the know, lowest common denominator kind of ORM. Like it, right. it's gotten better. Like if you're using Postgres, you can you can now do things that you couldn't do before. But still, it, it does have its limits. Yeah. So, so you, as you're as you found these limits, like what what's prompted you to be like, all right, it's time for gem, like time to consolidate all this stuff that I've figured out and problems we've solved, and focus it into a gem, right? Like what what sparks that? I think it was my brief sojourn into Elixir and Phoenix. Uh, I really I really liked its its ORM, huge, which is called Ecto. Fan. Are you? <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm sad I don't get to use it much anymore. Uh, but I really did enjoy Ecto, especially how fast it was. And part of it, you know, sometimes sometimes people say that constraints can open up new ways of thinking, and I think that's what had to happen because Elixir is a, a functional-ish language, and you can't have an active record-like interface on that. All the objects are immutable. You can't change an email address and hit save. You've got to have different ways of doing it. And those ways uh, turn out to be a lot faster. <laughs> and so, yeah, that combined with the experience of using these reflections APIs got me thinking, what if something like that were in active record? Uh, you could use a different ORM, but switching an ORM in an existing project is fraught. Um, so yeah, I started. I started toying with what I conceived as kind of the middle layer API. Uh, it gives up a few of the bells and whistles. You know, you can't you can't save objects like with Ecto the same way. But uh, you get most of the speed from the low level APIs that's just returning structs and tuples. Plus, as I was working on that, I thought, oh, maybe I could uh, do eager loading a different way and make it more flexible so you can add where conditions or change the order or any other kind of thing. So that, that's kind of where the idea came from. Um, yeah, I wanted to pull, pull this ideas out of an application and just make a general purpose gem. And that's where Octum's record was born. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, there are so many features in here. Uh, 
that I, I wish existed in, you know, active record for sure. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, and I'd be happy to just like walk through them with you because, uh, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Like, like we were saying, uh, you know, earlier with the like batch loading uh, as an example, uh, it seems you already have kind of like a cursor based, uh, approach for that, mm -hmm. uh, which is nice. Um, but another thing I saw in here, uh, which I find myself doing, you know, unfortunately too frequently <laughs> is the, uh, <laughs> the, you know, the custom SQL, uh, you know, and wanting to use active record with that. Right. Um, right. which I tend to just like, <laughs> you know, rely on, Hey, uh, fetch these, this SQL and just deal with the array that it returns. Right. Uh, yeah. What, which is the popular choice because there's not too much alternative. Uh, so how does Occam's razor kind of handle that case? Like uh, what, what kind of like features of active record does it like add on top of the raw SQL? Right. Well, first, the first thing it keeps, I'll say is the, the query builder. So, you know, model dot where, whatever, keep all that. Um, but you just, pass that into Occam's record. You don't, you don't run it with active record. And so Occam's record will run that SQL for you. Uh, you also use Occam's record for all the eager loadings. So it's, it's completely custom eager loading code there. It wasn't a great way to use rails built in. And like, if you're, if you're eager loading 20, 50 associations, that, that nested hash and array syntax can be really gnarly to read anyway. So. Uh, yeah, you, we use a block a block based syntax, which is I think easier to read and also lets you pass in all the options. Oh, I want to customize this one to add a where or order by or something like that. Yeah, this is really cool. Uh, <laughs> that was one thing I definitely uh, <laughs> always found confusing in Rails is you know how what syntax uh, <laughs> to use, you know when to use the hash, what to include in the hash, uh, right. right, and the eagle of right. Uh, it's not exactly straightforward, and I have the same problem with, uh, you know, the parameter, <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, where, you, yeah. what is it, permitted attributes or something like that? Uh, it has a very similar syntax, and uh, it's much easier to, to read through uh, your examples here of, of using the eager loading in a block syntax, uh, and I really like that. And uh, so... How do you go about building that eager loading context? Uh, like, is that all? How, how is that managed internally? Uh, I, I think there's a class called context. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it it's a nested structure, and it makes it makes heavy use of the reflections APIs from a from the active record models. So, you know, you say dot eager load customer. It looks, it looks at the customer reflection, figures out what the heck that is referring to and it figures out the right keys and stuff to join it with. Gotcha. So how much of uh, active records, like eager loading, uh, are you taking advantage of, or are you just like completely throwing that out and like, this is all completely custom? I had, I had to throw it all out. Um, <laughs> someone who knows the Rails code base well may have, you know, known a way to to take advantage of some of it, but yeah, that that's it's got to be some gnarly code in there because it's some gnarly code in here in Occam's record too. Um, <laughs> there there are yeah, a couple ex yeah there are a couple exotic use cases that I had to say nope not gonna not gonna touch that. <laughs> um, I mean that's the value of having your own gem, right? As you get to right. uh, decide which edge cases to consider or not, right? <laughs> yeah. Um. Which I think is part of the disadvantage of Active Record's current state, right? Is it has all these old, you know, edge cases that it needs to keep around. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, bugs, bugs become features over time, right, for sure. Right. <laughs> uh, so you, you mentioned like being able to kind of perform conditions on the eager load to to filter them down to to only eager load certain t kinds of batches. Like, how does mm -hmm. that work practically? Like, can you give us an example of uh, something you use it for? Oh. Well, I, I guess the, 
I guess the the user and orders thing is probably the the easiest example to to pull out. Um, I haven't used that exactly, but it's analogous. So if you're yeah. if you're looping through your users, you want to eager load their recent orders. You just you just append a little you know dot where created at greater than thirty days ago kind of thing. Uh, oh, that's cool. and you can you can you can use the scopes from your Active Record model, right? The custom scopes you define. So you could just define a scope on your model and use refer to it in Active Record. It will figure out what you're talking about and use that. I see you have scopes on that inside of the block. Yeah, I mean the block syntax definitely uh, gives you a lot of flexibility there. Um, being able to modify it in the scope that it's in. That's pretty cool. Looking at the next example here from your readme uh, is cursors, <laughs> which, yeah. you know, obviously it's like something I have, have been looking for for a while. <laughs> so uh, like, what is something, how do you use it? What is it? Right. Like, uh, yeah, I know what it is because I desire it. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but how, how is this useful for a, a lot of people? And, uh, you know, yeah, how do you use it? <laughs> yeah, so Active Records find each. Uh, like we talked about earlier, it's it's all offset and limit based, and so was Occam's record initially. I just did it the same way because that that's what I'd been using for many years, and it didn't even occur to me that I could implement cursor support. Uh, but yeah, find each uh, offset and limit work great for small to mediumish sized tables. When you get into hundreds of thousands, millions of records. Uh, each each loop you go through to load a new set of records, you know your next thousand records, the database has to do a bunch of work to find. Oh, this this offset is now at five hundred thousand. The database has to just walk through that table and find five hundred thousand one record. Uh, and yeah, that that gets slower and slower as as the table grows. And so a cursor. So it keeps that state open in the database. So it knows it's the same connection. It knows exactly where it was in the table. So you just say, oh, give me the next thousand. Give me the next thousand. Give me the next thousand. It doesn't matter how large the table is. There's a there's a constant speed there. Uh, and I should call out, yeah, right now, Occam's only supports cursors with Postgres, because that's, that's the only major database that supports cursors in the way that your average web app would want to use them. I, I think MySQL has has some kind of cursor support, but it's like only in functions or something. It's it, it's not easy to use. Yeah, MySQL has been unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, use Postgres. That's a full disclaimer there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm... <laughs> yeah, I mean, for definitely for like paging results, like. Cursors are just like so much faster, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, especially when you need to like start dealing with orders and you know or, order by clauses and things like that, where it starts to get a little tricky on you know uh, what is trying to like rank things on. Are they in an index? Like, are you doing table scan? Like, you end up having to run explains on everything to make sense of it. <laughs> yeah, uh, and cursors, you kind of just like let it run right <laughs> and if you have a big giant chunk of data it'll just like move through it right um and so uh you have some kind of interesting functions like behaviors around cursors uh which are like moving around and fetching the next pieces of it uh can you elaborate a little more on uh what each of those kind of does yeah yeah so there's the sort of two api levels there there's the high level api which is analogous to Rails find each. Uh, it's called find each with cursor. It works the exact same way as the find each we all know and, and love, but it just happens to use a cursor. Uh, there's also Active Record has, uh, I think it's called find in batches or something. Yep. Uh, and yeah, there's an analogous find in batches with cursor. It, the name's a little long, but <laughs> it was easy to remember. Just, just add with cursor to everything. <laughs> Um, and then there's a slightly lower level API where you can actually use the cursor commands like move forward, move backward, fetch, you know, X records, and there are a number of others. I don't think I've ever actually used that, uh, but it was 
it's kind of it was just kind of an internal API. I thought, oh, this could be useful. I'll clean it up and just make it a public API in case someone needs to do a little more than just loop forward constantly. I'm wondering, uh, have you considered like extracting pieces of this as like pull requests to Rails, or uh, <laughs> has it like not received very, <laughs> you know, <laughs> great feedback? Uh, uh, you know, wh why is it still its own thing? Yeah, uh, the, the number of times I've thought about that. Um, here's the thing, and I could be wrong, but here's my thinking. Writing code, that's easy. Dealing with a major open source project and saying, here's a very different, but what I think is a way better way to do things, that's, that's hard. That takes a lot of time and commitment, and I have not felt up to that challenge. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's a really good point. Uh, you know, <laughs> it would be nice if, you know, o open source projects in general were more approachable. <laughs> right. You know, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not criticizing the Rails maintainers no. or anything. It would just be, I think it would be an order of magnitude <laughs> more work than creating this gem. And yeah, I maybe someday I'll, I'll pursue that. But yeah, I've. I've not had the energy to so far. Yeah, you know, it does bring up a good point. Like, uh, you know, unless you're on like larger teams or organizations where you have resources to like contribute back, uh, you're kind of just like burning through your own time, right? right. Like, yeah. Uh, and yeah, why you have to weigh whether or not that's worth it uh, for you, right? Um, right. Yeah. Like, I've, so, I've done a couple bug fix PRs to Rails, you know, but yeah. those are, that's that's a totally different that's a totally different beast than a here's a brand new way to do right, half feature. of everything yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah it'll be interesting to see like uh you know i know for there was the uh you mentioned the with uh query the uh what is that called again uh, uh table expressions yeah um i i know that rail 7 you know kind of just implemented its own version of that. Uh, and so it is interesting to see kind of how those things come about. Uh, I'm curious if anybody sees your gem and, you know, is like, eh, we can probably rework this, you know? <laughs> do, you get, <laughs> do you get anybody reaching out to you like that? Or is it more of just, uh, oh, you notice something's new? Yeah, I haven't had anyone from the Rails team reach out to me, but I have noticed, like I, st I started this back in 2017. And I think the first big thing was uh, this This will fix your N plus one query problem because it doesn't support lazy loading or dynamic loading of associations. You have to, you have to be explicit up front and say, I'm going to load these ones and no more. And a couple of years after that, Rails added dot strict loading, which does that in Rails. It's opt in, but it, it's still there now and it wasn't there before. And yeah, the, I, I think... I expect everyone's hitting these problems that I had. I made a standalone thing. And just over time, people are trying to fix those same things in Rails. I, I think it's a case of everybody wanting the same things and just, you know, getting there different ways is what I suspect. Yeah, how to get how to get it in. <laughs> right. And it's uh, it's necessarily slower in a project as big as Rails than starting right. something up fresh. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it. Uh, in a way, there's a reason why SQL Gem is separate, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. For the same reasons, uh, you know, it, it has its own. Uh, you know, I, I definitely use it in a lot of side projects because <laughs> it because uh, of its support for like many different databases at once. You know, uh, yeah, which I know you know Active Record does as well, uh, but it's much easier to get set up in SQL, I think, um, outside of the Rails context. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is, I mean, this is really cool. Uh, I mean, there are so many features in here. <laughs> like, how did, how did you, like, was it a very incremental process? Or oh, yeah. You, oh, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was at first all about speed and killing off that N plus one problem. That was my only goal. And then I realized, oh, I can do, I can do some fancy stuff with eager loading, too. And I can do even fancier stuff with eager loading. And that went on for a long time. And then, oh, I can add cursors. And so yeah, it's it's been very iterative 
as I hit things that I'm working on that, oh, I need a way to do this. Rails doesn't support it. I know what to do. <laughs> uh, so I'm curious, have you, I don't know if it's in here or not, but have you considered like elaborating on the explains uh, and the in introspection queries that you get to like make a better explain? I haven't, no. <laughs> uh, that's an interesting idea, but no, I haven't thought of that. Uh, that's one thing I definitely, uh, <laughs> I'm well, always I'm, looking at explains, trying to yeah. make sense of it. And I, I feel like there's a website that explains, explains. <laughs> <laughs> and I always copy paste in there. I forget the name of it now, but. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, you I'm know. happy to accept pull requests if you want to, <laughs> okay. if you want to contribute that. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you seem to have a pretty good foundation here for, uh, you know, expanding on things. Um, do you have any like uh, next steps you, you're you planning to tackle? Or is this kind of like uh, a feature complete for what your use cases are? Uh, yeah, the last big thing added was cursors. And I, I, I had a few people ask for streaming support in Postgres. I played with that for a while. Uh, it's not really on the roadmap right now, but that could, that could be the next thing. But yeah, after that, I don't have anything, don't have any big plans for it at the moment. It's, it's nominally done, but yeah, that can always change. Streaming in Ruby is still hard. <laughs> it is. I have another <laughs> gem for that actually, but. Do you, what's that called? It's it's for streaming JSON specifically. It's called JSON emitter. Uh, JSON emitter. Yeah, yeah. It's when you don't want to generate twenty megabytes of JSON in memory and then spit it out at the client, you can. Oh, you can chunk it. Generate up. it as uh, you stream it. Yeah. That's very cool. I'm gonna check this out. Yeah, for those uh, at home, this is we'll put in the show notes. JSON dash emitter gem. Uh, very cool. Um, yeah, I'm curious how, uh, what you use for that internally as far as like, you know, process structure. I gotta say, I, I think I wrote that in like a weekend, like three years ago. Uh, so yeah, I kind of forget, uh, but yeah, it uses, it uses the, uh, what's that gem called that, uh, it'll detect the fastest JSON parser you have on your system and use that oh okay um yeah, yeah it's got a little too. yeah it's got a little internal buffer you know it'll generate so many kilobytes at once and then emit it out to, to whatever's listening be that rack or or something else oh that's very cool directly to a file or io object nice yeah i you know a ai has like made everybody start looking at streaming again right <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> which uh you know i know the rails uh core team is probably not too happy about because <laughs> i'm sure it's not a focus that they were planning for you know <laughs> probably not probably not <laughs> uh but yeah i mean uh i mean this json emitter is really neat uh that's gonna be super handy um yeah i'm always looking for ways to to make the uh, streaming process uh, easier. Well, while we're talking about the gems, I'll just throw out another gem I maintain. It's uh, called OTR-Active Record. Uh, stands for Off the Rails. So it's, oh, there it's, is. <laughs> it's a helper for when you want to <laughs> use Active Record, but not Rails. It's possible to do on your own, but it's not documented and it's awkward. I and always I, wondered I, if this was possible. This is, it is this is neat. Yeah. All right, so how how is it possible? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's actually not much. There's surprisingly little code in there, but you just have to initialize certain things, configure the database connections. You have to add a couple of your own rake tasks if you want to, you know, create new migration files. But a lot of the stuff, like running migrations is built in and it can just reuse all that. But it's, yeah, it's really just a wrapper to initialize the active record gem. And then you kind of use it however you want. Uh, once I just needed it in a, in a rake, in a rake script. Um, so I use that. But, That's really cool. 
Have you tested it with uh, multiple database connections? I had some pull requests to do that, and okay. it I've tested it. It works. I have not used it personally in production. <laughs> I've just tested it on my machine that it that it does seem to work. That's very yeah. cool. <laughs> it's possible, folks. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> oh, off the rails. <laughs> Are there other uh, you know off the rails projects out there? I mean, that just sound, that's such a catchy name. <laughs> but, uh, not when I wrote it. I haven't looked for a while. But... <laughs> oh, that's super fun. All right, so back to Occam's record. <laughs> uh, I couldn't help but notice the name Occam's record to Occam's razor. I, mm -hmm. I imagine that is uh, related directly. Uh... It is, yeah. <laughs> um, people... people quote Occam's record, especially movies and TV shows, they 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 say it's something like the simplest the simplest answer is usually the best one. Right. Uh, but I actually went and I found the quote from William of Occam from back in the 1500s or something. And what he actually said was, do not multiply entities beyond necessity. <laughs> and what I came to learn is that the Rails internals, because it's it's optimized for reading and writing records, it has a lot of entities in there, a lot of objects, a lot of initialization. And most of our workloads in our web apps are read heavy. They're 80, 90% reads only. And when we load thousands of active record objects, there's a lot of CPU and memory stuff happening there that's just wasted. It's never used because we're not writing anything back. We're not making changes. We're not running the active record callback chain. And so, yeah, for a lot of the time, I thought, oh, those, those are entities that have been multiplied beyond necessity. So, yeah, Occam's record was a way to try to fix that. Yeah, you know, I, I, I often find myself like, adding selects right everywhere <laughs> just to slim yep. down the record you know the memory footprint of it uh and mostly because you don't need half of it right like... right yeah <laughs> yeah it, yeah dbas love when you can when you can do that <laughs> um but it's yeah you can't do it on like eager loads for instance yeah. so yeah i mean i'm i'm a little surprised because you know rails gives you that full like end-to-end -end footprint of what's being used in that Right. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm a little surprised that there isn't more, uh, yeah, I don't know, data or something like that, statistics that you can gather uh, to identify these like areas. Like once you get to a certain point, I know there's like, the, what is it, the bullet gem or, or things like that where they help with N plus ones. Right. Uh, but more like to like finding the areas where you can even reduce the record size, uh, the object size that you get back. I feel like that's something I, I'm always looking to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, retrospectively, <laughs> after you've after you've gotten it out, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I mean, because you're in a view or however you're using it is always in the same Rails, you know, the frame the context of the framework. I always thought there would there's something missing there, right? Where it could give you a little signal, you know, or just automatically select things <laughs> based on the usage of the subsequent requests mm. but i digress <laughs> uh so how do you how are you handle handling uh the m plus one aspects i know you mentioned uh briefly that you have solved like some common m plus one problems um right how what what are what are those that you've solved with Hawkins record so well let, let's go back to our user and orders example so Let's say let's say there's a orders like metadata table. Or no, I'm sorry, let's say yeah, user orders and then like the items, the products. Um, in Active Record, unless you use the recently added strict loading option, if if you don't eager load that final products like leaf node every every time you loop through and say user.orders.products. New query, new query, new query. Um, and that just kind of magically happens because it's an active record 
record and it has all that knowledge, oh, I'm going to try to be helpful and, you know, select the stuff for you. I don't know I'm in a loop. Uh, so with Occam's, the results are not active record class objects. They're not model instances. They're basically structs. And if you don't say eager load the products on the orders, there's there's just going to be like a no method error when you call you know order dot product. Uh, I like that better than <laughs> right better than and how like, real is it? <laughs> yeah, and like it, it, I try to throw friendly error messages when I can. Like you know, it inter it, uh, it intercepts that and tells you, oh here's here's like the table that was pulled from, um, and so you, you can find it. You can find it in your you know, massive nested list of, of eager loads more easily. Uh, and the same kind of thing for uh, columns too. It's like if you just select the three columns you need, and you call a fourth column you didn't load. Instead of just saying no method, it'll tell you, oh, that looks like a column on the model, but you didn't select it in your statement. So maybe go do that. Yeah, I'm guilty doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, you know, so many of these things are just common. Uh, you know, address so many common pitfalls of Active Record, right? Uh, as you start to get more complicated queries, um... right? Yeah, it, it's almost like necessarily. I don't think someone could have designed something like this or something better than this, because I think there could be <laughs> things that are better just from scratch. Like we had to all use Active Record for a decade right. and realize, oh, here are all the pitfalls. Ooh, now it's now it's hard to go back and fix all that because it would be breaking. Yeah, and I mean, even the, even some of the ways that there are, you can do, you know, with the ARL table, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there are ways to do some of these things. Uh, it's just, it just doesn't look that great. Right. <laughs> and and uh, it definitely doesn't, uh, you know, cover all cases. Uh, I feel like it just leads, because it's hard to look at, it also causes you know, problems that you aren't thinking about. Uh, I know I've done that by accident and then been like, oh, I was missing a, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Could be anything. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I've always found that just like doing a custom SQL statement is just like so much clearer and, and obvious, right? Than yeah. having to travel through all of the active record specific syntax, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, it gets, it's, it's very easy. It gets to be very... cumbersome great up to a point and then then it's too much and you got to re remember what is this doing right and yeah it's easier just to read the sequel sometimes <laughs> so I, I was seeing in here uh that you have a way to kind of include custom modules that uh get used in the eager loading process which is really cool uh can you walk through uh like what that is and and how that you're using it? Yeah. So with our users example, let's say you have a column for title, a prefix, first name, middle name, last name. You probably have a method in your model called just name where you concatenate all that together. Um, and it it would be nice to have that in an Occam's record result too. So you can you can abstract that name method from your model. From a user model out into a module, include that in your user model, and then when you're running an Occam's record query, say, "Oh, use this, use this module on the user result, so that I have that name method available." Oh, that's really cool. So you don't pollute the model with that customization; it stays on the on the record aspect of it. Right, right. Or in some cases, yeah, I've seen people add. They'll just add like a module in line in the in the active record model, yeah. and then include and, and say include right below it or something. Um, yeah, so I've done that a lot that with context. I've done a lot with concerns, right? Uh, to do yeah. the concerning blocks, and then you have all of your specific chunks of stuff, uh, you know, record related. Right. Uh, it definitely makes it easier to to manage those specific things, right? If you have a a huge order history and you only want all the financial stuff in one place, like Mm -hmm. It's easy to to manage like tax stuff or <laughs> yeah you know that was that was kind of together yeah that was kind of a nod to the real world like 
idea was only <laughs> structs, no methods. But if, if you're replacing a giant query with this to make it more efficient, you really kind of need that capability in there. Uh, and more recently, I added, uh, I think it's down the page, but something called active record fallback. So let's say you're, I don't know, you're looping through some kind of like attachments model to like a message or something, and you're using carrier wave or paperclip to handle all your upload and file fetching needs. Uh, it's pretty hard to extract that into a module. And so you can say, oh, on this, on this eager load, if I call a method that doesn't exist, uh, please initialize a Rails model for me and call that method on it. It it takes away a little bit of the speed because you are loading an active record model, but sometimes for sometimes that's the only practical way, you know, to load your file attachments if you're using Occam's record. That yeah, another that nod sense. to the needs of reality. <laughs> uh so one thing I was wondering about while reading through this, uh, how do how do you handle like, do you use Occam's record for handling like custom selects that calculate things or aggregate aggregate functions or things like that, or or is this meant more for like the eager loading aspect and uh, optimal like batching? Uh, you you definitely can use it for that. Like you're saying, like. Just write your own custom SQL full stop. Yeah. Yeah, you can. There's a there's a method on there where you can pass in a SQL string. Uh, you can pass in like bind parameters to it so they're safely escaped. Yeah, you can use it. You can use it to run raw SQL and get back tuples. And you can also do eager loading against that raw SQL if you want to as well. Cool. I, do you provide any uh, mechanism for like? Uh, referencing those custom columns or pieces of the the custom SQL, or is it more of just keeping it in the tuples form? Uh, yeah, it's it's really just a tuple form. You know, yeah. you, you do your sum as and give it a name, and just that yeah. that field will be on the result. That's yeah, that's all there is to it. Yeah, I see your big disclaimer here. Results are read only. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that was important to throw that up somewhere near the top so nobody's surprised. Oh, uh, since we were talking about raw SQL, there's a there is an option where you can eager load a SQL string statement as if it were an active record association, even though it's not. So like I've I've had to in the past uh, let's say it, it's sort of like has many through, but you don't have that set up. So you need to write that SQL yourself. And it can actually be more efficient than loading. Oh, I need to load these six nested associations just to get to the leaf one. Sometimes you can write that SQL. If, if you're good at SQL, you can write that yourself. Yep. And just get a single select, and that can be a whole lot faster than uh, loading a bunch of intermediate records that are just joining and slowing things down. Though I'm not sure anyone but me has ever used that. I've, I've had people ask me, I don't get this. I'm like, I know it's complicated to look at. I couldn't couldn't find a simpler way to uh, to express it. <laughs> <laughs> it it's hard. I mean, that ad, advanced when you want these advanced ed, edge cases, or I guess they're not edge cases, but these advanced concepts, uh, it's going to be difficult to to get a good <laughs> good anything out of it. Uh, yeah. I think you did a good job here, at least uh consolidating a lot of the common you know issues uh specifically around your loading rate right? and uh getting rid of a lot of those unnecessary select you know nested selects so i see you have a, a benchmarking uh entire section here on benchmarking <laughs> yeah do you, want to, do you want to explain maybe uh what you've focused on benchmarking and and kind of like the significant improvements here uh that i'm seeing number wise yeah, and uh, I'll say I've not run these benchmarks on Rails 7 yet, uh, and maybe not even on 6.1. I know Rails and Active Rec, they've tried to make a lot of speed improvements. Uh, so most of these are against, I think, Rails 5 or 6.0. But yeah, on, on average, I was able to see a 3x speed up. Um, and the benchmarking code is in the repo, if anybody. I need to run it again, because it's probably you know, 2.5 now instead of 3. 
but yeah, I wanted to measure. I wanted to measure: is this actually better? And I wanted after after any significant change, I would run it to see: is this did I did I just kill the performance by doing this, or is it still okay? Yeah, I, I want to call out the uh, the memory test uh, has some pretty significant uh, improvements, uh, which I think says a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> that's that's probably what gives uh the speed the extra boost as well uh I th yeah, especially, with it's these, be. especially with these has many uh aspects uh pr the, those are the most impressive uh you know a thousand percent <laughs> improvement <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'd be curious to see what that looks like against like a real uh seven active record seven or something like that yeah, uh, I'll be honest. I've been a little afraid. I'm like, oh no, what if it's like a, <laughs> what if it's now just like a 1.2 x improvement? I'm like, Ugh. but I mean, with the cursors, yeah, you're definitely going to be up there still. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, so what is your process for like do, uh, when you make adjustments, do you like, where do you look at for a lot of the uh, performance testing? um what's most, your process for that yeah mostly it it doesn't touch on all the eager loading stuff or it's just like run the query over these you know large tables what does the memory look like before and after um what is the speed of this versus active record it's it's fairly simple and straightforward potentially even a bit naive um Do you have any plans to add any other uh, adapters to it, or are you just sticking with Postgres? It well, it it technically supports anything that Active Record supports. Uh, so Postgres, MySQL, SQLite, uh, and yeah, a couple other databases. Yeah, it's the only thing that is database specific. I think is the cursor support. Is that cursor support. Yeah. Well, that's cool. So, how do you stay up to date with Rails? <laughs> that's my, la you know. <laughs> so, as you know, as you see uh, things come out in Rails, do you like go to look at it right away and see if like there are things you can start dropping off? Do you drop things off if you find them? You know, what it, what is your approach to that? Yeah, that hasn't happened yet. I know, I know, Rails added uh, the strict loading option, which is their solution to N plus one, um, which is great. But I don't feel like I could would want to drop that from this. That that wouldn't make sense. Um, yeah, yeah. So far, the things Rails has added haven't really caused me to want to drop anything from this. Um, there there are still gaps. There's still gaps between them. Like I don't, I don't foresee Rails ever adding everything that's in this and making sure. it unnecessary. Yeah. Um, if if you just want if all you're concerned about is n plus one, you don't need this anymore. As of I think Rails six point one or something. Uh, but if you want some of the other goodies, eager loading, number of other things, cursors, uh, then for the moment you would still need this. And yeah, it sounds like cursors might be next on that. If you only want cursor support, maybe you can use Active Record soon. But I don't think it's there yet. No, I don't think it is either. Uh... <laughs> But I know there's a lot of people uh, working on it, so ho hopefully, yeah, <laughs> <You know? laughs> we'll see. Uh, you know, thank you to all those that are working on it. <laughs> we appreciate yes. you. <laughs> yes. Uh, so this is great. So, uh, are you using this with? I'm curious if you're using this like in collaboration with other gems uh, and finding like even more optimization. Um, not really. Um, no. <laughs> yeah, not yet. Not yet. At least I'll say. Do you find yourself using something like Bullet as an example uh, with your Occam's record, just like as a way to like help you identify things within Occ Occam Occam's record, right? Yeah, I've definitely used Bullet. Uh, I don't think I don't think Bullet would be aware of what's going on in Occam's. Um, I'm trying to remember how Bullet works. I think it only is active in tests. Is that right? Does that sound right? I think they have a development uh, toggle now where you can have okay. it on in development too. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I think I think 
yeah, I, I definitely use bullet in apps. That's a great way. That's a, I think, I think every app should probably use bullet, honestly, because you can, you can still fix those problems without, with, with just active record. Um, yeah, you don't, you don't need to use this just to fix a few N plus one problems in your app for sure. Bullet is great for finding and fixing those manually. Well, this, this is really awesome. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to call out, uh, call out on active record or any of your lovely, uh, gems here? Uh, no, I'm, I was kind of hate self-promotion. So <laughs> hey, but, promote away. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, nothing else. That's, I'm, I'm really excited that the rails core team is addressing some of these issues. Uh, even though, yeah, it takes a long time. And I don't know, I think if there's one thing that they could pull over that they probably don't intend to is the eager loading stuff. I, I think that's, I think Rails having an alt, an alternate eager loading API would be a great thing. And maybe someday that's where I'll just start, I'll open, I'll try to start a discussion or an issue and say, hey, you know, what would syntax like this with these capabilities, look, that might be worth doing. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, Aaron Patterson's uh, adequate record. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, that was great. Uh, uh, for <laughs> for those that don't uh, are familiar with adequate record, it was like a, an alternate uh, <laughs> application was it uh, active record implementation uh, that Aaron Patterson had uh, significant improvements in, in various parts that he just called adequate. And uh, eventually pieces of it did end up in rails. Uh, if not all of it, I, I, I don't, I don't remember how that uh, panned out, but. I yeah. I think, pretty I'm pretty sure some of that did get folded in. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, you know, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk today and, I'm definitely looking forward to to playing around with Occam's record. Lots of cool stuff in here. Um, yeah, and, and to be honest, your JSON streamer, uh, JSON emitter, looks looks really cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna be playing with that. Uh, okay. Uh, well, let's. If there's nothing else you want to talk about, uh, let's let's move into picks. I've been working on uh, an, an AI project recently. Uh, I'm I'm constantly like more and more doing I, I hate to even use the term AI, but it's so popular at this point. Like <laughs> I have no choice. Otherwise, like people just aren't gonna know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh but so I, I've been working on uh, you know, trying to guide uh uh you know this these bots to give you the responses that you want. Uh and uh I, I found this really great uh write up that was that has pretty much like a how to use embeddings how what they are like different ways you could format them in order to get the best search results out of it uh and to to help guide like completions uh for a lot of these large language models it's been super helpful uh in like uh helping me understand it but also to you know find out the best ways to uh, do things without having to trial and error <laughs> your way to success. Uh, so I'll, I'll recommend that. Uh, highly recommend checking that out. I'm going to go with just a little side project that I've been following. Uh, you know, Julia Evans um, has a lot of great guides and I think, do you say zines or zines? I, I've never heard that word pronounced. I think it's signs. I don't. Zines, okay. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> Let's go with signs. <laughs> Let's go with signs. Um, I've been following how to implement your own DNS resolver. Uh, this this guide is in Python, but like Julie Evans does a lot of these basic infrastructure. How does this work? Here's a guide to do it on your own. And I've been going through a lot of those lately. Uh, yeah, right now it's the DNS resolver. And I, yeah, I think understanding that those lower levels. You don't need it for your day job, but it will make you, I think it will make you a better program and more aware of what's happening underneath all the layers that we work at. Yeah, that's super cool. I love playing with that DNS uh, playground that she has. Uh, 
Julie Evans has some awesome stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm always on the lookout. I, I have her Linux toolbox uh, behind me, uh, and I'm always referencing it. <laughs> so many great gems in there. That's uh, a huge plus one there. All right. Well, th thanks again for coming on, Jordan. It was awesome to talk to you and uh, learning all about how to make your uh, you know, Rails application record, active record, whatever we're going to call it these days. Uh, it keeps changing the names, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's, been, it's been really fun. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, well, until next time, folks. Valentino out.